Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So a little while back, we're talking about 2019, a fella by the name of Po Shen Lo came up with a new formula to figure out the roots of quadratic equations. And when he discovered this formula, it was touted as being simpler than the original quadratic formula that we know and love. Apparently it's, uh, it's easier on, uh, on pen and paper. So if you're figuring out uh, roots to quadratic equations, but I'm not interested in figuring out roots with a pen and paper. What I'm interested in is one burning question. One question. Is it faster for a computer? Is the new post and low quadratic formula faster than the tried and true original quadratic formula? Tell you what, he's got his work cut out for him because the original formula is fast with a capital P H. All right, so what I've done is uh, devised a series of diabolical tests, testing out various different versions of the two formulas, and we've raced them one against the other, recording the times to see which one is actually faster. Now, before we get into things, I just want to mention that I won't be explaining the Po Shen Lo formula. If you want to have a look at his explanation, Po Shen Lo himself put up a video on YouTube, so I'll put a link maybe up above and another one in the description down below. It pretty much just finds the middle of the two roots, then finds the difference, and then adds and subtracts the difference from that middle to get the uh, two roots. Now, it's a really clever formula, I must say, very clever. And uh, apparently it didn't escape the Babylonians back in the day. Uh, although, uh, Po Shen Lo did add a new bit on the end of it, which I think is original. Uh, but the Babylonians knew everything about everything, so let's just not go there. Didn't they make hanging gardens as well? The hanging gardens of... Moving on. Also, before we get started, I want to say a great big thank you to all of the Patreons. We've got a, another ebook coming your way, this video. And I'll also put uh, the, the source code for the test program up so that you can run it on your machine. Patreons, you're a you bunch of legends. The lot is seriously legends. And uh, without further ado, Po Shen Lo versus the quadratic formula. Which one is faster? Here's how this is going to work. We're going to have eight different rounds. And what we'll do first each round is just have a look at the two versions of the code. And after we've sort of compared and contrasted the codes a little bit, you'll see two bars up on the screen. The red bar is going to represent the original quadratic formula, and the blue bar on the right-hand side represents the Po Shen Lo formula. So they're going to go down and indicate the time or the speed that these formulas performed. Now keep in mind that lower is better. We want our code to go faster, so lower is better each round. Two more other little things before we get started. The tests were run over 128 million quadratics. And these roots are computed 10 times, and we average those 10 runs to find the final time. And the other thing that I want to say is if the two times are so close together that they're within one standard deviation, then we're considering that to be a tie. Because that pretty much means if we ran it again and again, then the lead would switch between the original quadratic and the post and low. But that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's move on to the code for round one. Okay, here it is. So you can see in red, the original quadratic, and down there in blue is the Po Shen Lo version. These two codes sort of represent the most obvious way that we might implement these uh, two algorithms. There's a structure in green, contains uh, floats A, B, and C, which represent the coefficients of the quadratics. And then the two roots that we're finding are R1 and R2. Now, having a look at the red code for the original quadratic, it looks a little bit fiddly, but it's pretty much just a straightforward conversion of the quadratic formula into code. Yeah, so you see there's just a loop just there, and then computing R1 or the principal root, we add the discriminant to negative B, and then divide by 2A, and then for the other root, we subtract that discriminant. And now having a look at the post and low, it's fairly similar. So once again, we've got a loop, and we're dealing with the same quad struct, we start out by scaling B and C by A if we need to. Then we find the middle of the two roots called mid just here in the code. And then we find the difference that the two roots are from that middle. And then finally, to find the two roots R1 and R2, we just add or subtract that difference from the middle value. So this is a fairly standard implementation of quadratic roots just here. But even looking at this code, it's quite hard to tell which one will win. But have a look at the code. Take a bit of a guess or place your bet which one you think is faster. And, uh, well, let's have a look. Here we go. Round one.
we go. So the original quadratic in round one won by a considerable margin, taking 260.3 milliseconds versus the Po Shen Lo's 322 milliseconds to compute 128 million quadratic roots. Interesting stuff. Let's move on to round two. Okay, for round two, we're going to switch the data around. We had an array of structures and we were stepping through each of the elements in the array. It's often not the best idea for, for caching and SIMD, the registers inside the CPU. What you really want to do often, instead of using an array of structures, is you want to make what's called a structure of arrays. So the idea here is instead of storing elements a, B, and C beside each other in RAM, what you want to do is store all of the A elements beside each other in one array, then all of the B elements in a separate array, and all of the C elements in a separate array. And what this allows the CPU to do is read many of these elements at once, and potentially it could vectorize and perform the code much faster. For round two, we have ditched our structure from round one, and we've now got A, B, C, R1 and R2 in separate arrays. Here's the code, have a bit of a look. Hopefully this will allow the CPU or the compiler, really, to, to vectorize the code. Maybe we'll get a really good speed increase. Have a bit of a look at these codes and place your bets. Which do you think is faster? Let's have a look. we go. Interesting stuff. So the original quadratic in round two performed really, really well. 144.6 milliseconds versus 260.3 from round one. And the Po Shen Lo formula actually performed worse now that we've gone with the structure of arrays. Computing the roots in 369.1 milliseconds versus round one time of 322.1 milliseconds. Interesting stuff. So far, the original quadratic formula is going strong. Okay, round number three. Now we're going to add some optimizations. If we have a look at the original quadratic formula, when we compute each of these roots, we are computing the discriminant. We could actually just compute that discriminant once and take the square root and then reuse that for both of these roots. And that might speed things up. If the compiler was clever enough, it might have noticed that this uh, discriminant can be reused. And in that case, uh, we won't see any improvement in the speed. We'll just have to have a look at the end at the time to see if the compiler was actually clever enough to reuse a discriminant. But this will be the optimization for round three for the original quadratic. And having a look at the code for the Po Shen Lo formula from round uh, one and two, you see there's a, there's a branch just here, this if statement. It said, uh, if A is not one, then scale B and C. But if A does equal one, then dividing by A, which is one, isn't gonna change B and C. So what we can actually do is just get rid of the branch. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully the uh, Po Shen Lo formula performs a little better. So those are the two optimizations. Have a look at the code. Which do you think is faster? Round three, here we go. our first tie by standard deviation. So the two times are the same. And what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that for one thing, the compiler was clever enough in the original quadratic to reuse the discriminant, which is nice to know. 
And it also tells us that that branch, that branch in the Po Shen Lo was really, really slowing things down. So now that we've removed that branch, the Po Shen Lo formula is suddenly performing neck and neck with the original quadratic. What is going to happen? Let's move on to round four, shall we? Now, round four. I don't know about you, but when I'm computing quadratic roots, I like them to be complex. Let's ditch these stupid scalars and move over to something more interesting, complex numbers. For round four, we're just going to implement both of the algorithms, nice and simple, only we're going to use STD complex. So this is the standard C++ complex class. So here is the code for round four. You'll notice that for the original quadratic, we've got the double computation of the discriminant just here. Will the compiler still be smart enough to reuse that discriminant, or will it compute that discriminant twice, thereby wasting a huge amount of time? And for the post and low formula, we've got our branch back in the code. So the compiler's going to have trouble vectorizing this code. It's going to have trouble figuring out if it should uh, reuse the discriminant. But that's the code for round four. Place your bets. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the post and low formula has absolutely smashed the opposition. The original quadratic formula there computed the 128 million complex roots in 18.463 seconds, but the post and low formula took an amazingly fast 11.644 seconds. So you'll notice that that's been scaled quite a bit. The operations on STD complex numbers is much more complicated than the scalars that we were using before, and so that's been scaled quite a bit. But you see that the post and low formula there has really just annihilated the competition. Interesting stuff. What's going to happen from here? It's anybody's guess. <laughs> Round five. Is the compiler reusing the discriminant computation for the original quadratic formula? And what happens if we remove the branch from the Po Shen Lo? Let's have a look. Here is the code for round five. Have a bit of a squiz at that and see if you can figure out heads or tails. Alrighty, place your bets. Here we go, round five. It's a close one. We'll have to go to the standard deviation and we await the judge's decision. And it's red. The original quadratic has taken another round. So the time's there, 10.5 seconds for the original quadratic and 10.6 seconds for the Po Shen Lo. Now, it's interesting, but that would indicate that the original quadratic was not reusing the discriminant in this instance with STD complex. And so if we code it such that the compiler realizes that it has to reuse the discriminant, we get a lot of speed. And it's interesting that the Po Shen Lo formula has actually sped up when we remove the branch, but not by a lot. So intriguing, you have to wonder why. So the two formulas are very, very close, but in this particular case, the original quadratic was faster by a factor of more than one standard deviation, so it has taken the win for round five. Alrighty, moving on to round number six. Now, we don't have to trust the compiler to reuse the discriminants or, or make our code branchless or whatever. We can just code that ourselves. Round number six is assembly language, of course. 
Now the code looks really long-winded, so in assembly language you just do sort of one little step per instruction, and each instruction takes a line. So the code looks really long, but a lot of these instructions are really simple. I'm pretty sure that this is not the fastest code in the world, but, but I will say, uh, it moves at a decent clip. Okay, well we don't have to go into details about how this code works, I've released a million videos on assembly language in the past. But just a couple of things, it's a CMD, AVX2, and that means that per iteration of the loop it's going to be finding eight roots at once, sort of in parallel. The roots that we're finding here are complex once again, and uh, it's single precision, floating point, just like before. And there's a couple of interesting instructions that we can use to, to gain speed here. The FMAD instructions, or fused, multiply, and add. These instructions will multiply numbers together and add them all in one fell swoop. So that's really quick to be able to combine your uh, multiplications and additions. And there's a few points in the various algorithms where we can use uh, those FMAD instructions. At any rate, here is the code for the original quadratic. And moving over to the code from uh, the Poshen Lo, looks something like this. Now I will say of the Poshen Lo, because the formula is slightly simpler, the loop was unrolled, which is very interesting. Unrolling, often. Uh, improves the speed dramatically, whereas uh, in the original quadratic uh, I was not able to unroll the loop. Though I'm sure with some more register shuffling, if I'd given it a little bit more thought, you probably could unroll the original quadratic as well. At any rate, the potion low formula is unrolled, but similar sorts of operations. I mean, these things have to compute the same uh, roots in the end, so, so the two formulas are extremely closely related. At any rate, there is the code for the potion low, and we've seen the code for the original quadratic, which will be faster. Well, that's very difficult to tell, but place your bets. Here we go. Round number six. Well, there we go. The post and low formula has taken another win. Now, do you want to know something interesting? Something really interesting. The post and low formula actually ran at the same speed before I unrolled it. So what that sort of means is that the bottleneck is not the instructions, but the RAM bus. And that actually wraps up all of our tests for the CPU. So for the CPU, the fastest of them all is the Poshen Low formula. Now, I have no doubt that you could uh, optimize these things further, but I tell you what, I actually did tests of just reading and writing the RAM with no computation at all. And uh, these formulas are running at sort of 90, 95% the speed of that read. The computation themselves is taking almost no time at all. And the thing that's taking really all of the time at this point is, is pretty much just reading and writing to RAM. Interesting stuff. Now, be that as it may, Jermaine. We're not English. Be that as it may, Jermaine. The other thing that we might test is how quickly can the graphics card compute? Now, a graphics card is pretty much built for exactly this. And uh, needless to say, it's pretty brisk. So a couple of things about this code. For, for one thing, it's, uh, it's CUDA code. So it's only going to work on NVIDIA GPUs. And there's a couple of differences between a graphics card and a CPU. Maybe the main difference is just the fact that a graphics card is inherently very parallel. Something like the SIMD on a CPU, but but more so. Uh, instead of running sort of one or two threads, or maybe eight uh, different little SIMD threads, uh, the graphics card runs, you know, hundreds at once. But the other thing about a graphics card is that its clock is is usually a lot slower than, than the CPU. So the graphics card is really made to compute lots of things in parallel that are completely independent. Anyway, here is the code. Have a bit of a look at that. Pretty simple, really. CUDA, CUDA C code. 
Yeah, nice, nice system, Kuda C. Take a guess who you think's going to win. I mean, it's anybody's guess now. It's pretty much just pick a colour, really. Well, place your bets. Round number seven. Scalar GPGPU. Here we go. another tie there you go so both formulas performing perfectly well there and very very fast roughly double the speed of our fastest uh, cpu scalar code which is pretty much what you'd expect from a graphics card the final test is once again cuda gp gpu and this time we're talking complex numbers so here is the code a little long-winded this time once again i'm not using any library functions here we're computing our own square roots and divisions and things with these complex numbers just to try and keep the speed or the performance up here's the code have a bit of a look who do you reckon's gonna win this one this is the final round place your bets for the final time here we go round eight gp gpu with complex numbers has taken it again okay so the final round there cuda complex numbers was won by the original quadratic and what's interesting there is that those times are so close together but i tell you what the standard deviation of the graphics card is just tiny the graphics card is so consistent when it runs these uh, quadratics even a small win is uh, statistically significant enough to to call it the original quadratic has won this round and that is all of the tests. So what can we say about all of these times? Well, it seems a pretty even split. I mean, there were some interesting wins for the original quadratic formula. But then again, there were some interesting wins for the Po Shen Lo as well. I find it fascinating that the original quadratic really fell short of the Po Shen Lo in the highly optimized assembly version. But then when we switched over to CUDA, the original quadratic formula outdoes the Po Shen Lo just by a small margin. So which one is the fastest? Well, surprise, surprise, um, it depends. <laughs> and what we really want to do to figure out which one is going to be fastest is uh, figure out a lot more about our particular circumstance that we're using these things. The times that we recorded when we were dealing with scalars are very, very different from the times that we record when we're dealing with complex numbers. And indeed, if we moved up to something with more dimensions, say quaternions or, or beyond, matrices or something like that, then again, the times that these two algorithms would perform would be completely different. What we're really looking at here is a comparison of two different ways of computing the same result, and the two different ways have different numbers of operations. If we want to get a good idea of which algorithm might perform fastest in a particular circumstance, then what we might do is start by making a little table, something like this. We've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and square root. Now, these are the operations that are involved in both of the formulas. And then we might take note of the time that it takes whatever system we're programming to perform each of those operations. So something like addition and subtraction are usually pretty fast. So they might take a time of one, for example, and then multiplication 
animation is often a bit slower, so that might have a time of two. Division is much slower, so that might take eight. And then square root, we might say, is about 12. And then if we have a look at the quadratic formula and the post and low formula, we can take a note of how many times they apply each operation. And then what we can do is just sum up all of those times for each of the formulas, and we will come to a total. The quadratic has one addition, four subtractions, five multiplications, two divisions, and one square root. Then the total time that we could expect there is about 43. Now, if we look at the post and low formula and we do the same thing, we count out the operations, what you'll find is that the number of additions and subtractions is roughly the same. The square root is the same. Both of the algorithms have a square root. But the difference, the biggest difference between the two is in the multiplication count and the division count. So for one thing, the original quadratic formula has many, many more multiplications. So we're talking about five multiplications versus one multiplication from the post and low. The post and low actually has an extra division though. So if we sum up all of the post and low operations just here, we reach a time of 42. So in this scenario, you'll find that the post and low algorithm actually outperforms the quadratic. But if we had a completely different system, maybe one that could perform multiplication really, really fast, say in a time of 0.5, if we sum up these totals, then what you'll find is that the original quadratic outperforms the post and low by quite a margin. What we're really looking at here is a question of the speed of division versus multiplication. And depending on what you're coding this for, whether you're using matrices or complex numbers or just scalars or whatever, you'll come up with completely different totals at the end. This will give you a general idea as to why we're getting different times from these two algorithms. But in general, we might say something like, if you're dealing with a system that can multiply fairly fast relative to the speed of division, then you should find that the original quadratic outperforms the post and low. If you're dealing with a system where the difference between multiplication and division is not so extreme, then you should find that the post and low outperforms the quadratic just because it's got far fewer multiplications. Anyway, that was just a bit of fun. I don't think we can say which one is faster. They are both absolutely excellent. And I have to say, well done, Mr. Poche and Lo. That is a really interesting uh, formula. It does indeed give the original quadratic a run for its money in a lot of different circumstances. That's pretty much all that I wanted to say on the matter. Other than that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. We're going to have uh, an ebook put up for this video. Uh, for the Patreons. That's pretty much all that I wanted to say, and uh, I hope that was interesting to people, and I want you to have a really good day. All right, see ya.